<laughs> morning. Good morning. We're just above Salter's Load Lock on the middle level navigation, technically on Well Creek, which runs just beside the Old Bedford, which runs just beside the New Bedford, which runs just beside the Ooze past Denver. I it's in. quite a... <laughs> It's quite confusing. Yeah, it's like a hand of waterways going <laughs> north. And uh, and this one goes north only to that bend there and then turns and goes uh, west. So. so yeah, the middle level is quite a maze of waterways. Mm -hmm. um, and it's complicated because some are no longer navigable, some have got dead ends, some have got low bridges. So we're trying to work out the best route through them. There's not many official visitor moorings. So no, that's going to limit us. There's also not a lot of services on here. Essentially, there is more or less, it's the middle level is really kind of used as a junction between the Neen at Peterborough and um, the Ooze here at Denver. And that's the majority of the traffic that goes across it. Yeah, you don't necessarily come to visit it to visit it. Like we do, you do it to get from the main network and the Neen to the, the Fen. Yeah, and you'll probably start in Upwell and March and maybe a few other you know spots along the way but most people are just going to kind of do a transition across now we're going to try and actually do the everything we can do yeah now to say that we're doing the majority is a bit problematic because there are effectively two main routes there's kind of the direct way. direct crossing route and, the and then there's the 20 foot drain which goes up and then joins the direct crossing route now the 20 foot drain is really problematic because there's a bridge on there that's only about five foot two inches off the water so it probably won't fit no. yeah unless the water level is really low there's there's virtually no chance of crossing that one and as far as we can tell it's also quite narrow I mean it is called the 20 foot drain um, so that we can't there's no turning point that we can see yeah which we need to verify when we actually get there but basically it means that 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 bend is kind of out of action for anybody who isn't on a very short boat so from here you can go over to Marmont Lock and then you can go down and back over Popham's O and then that takes you to the middle level main drain or which, the 16 foot drain it's called at some point right yeah and everything's called all the drains have their own individual names so the main drain which is the 16 foot drain continues up it goes under an aqueduct of this the well creek uh and then proceeds out from that point which is not navigable all the way back until it joins the main bank of the tidal ooze Ooh. which we passed when we were coming through um king's lynn so there's there's like all sorts of connections and that's only here. a quarter of it like that's before we even yeah get into the main bit anyway what we're saying is it's very complicated you need multiple colors to be able to figure it out you need an algorithm to figure out the right i route. think i'm gonna do a map for us like one of my maps we might have to do one of your maps i don't think it'll be that popular for people to buy but i think it will help me understand yeah yeah <laughs> it probably won't take us very long to do the middle level because Although there's quite a few miles, there's not really a lot to stop at. There's not a lot of moorings and there's not a lot of shopping. And yeah, there's not a lot of kind of sights to see, I don't think. No, no. I mean, you know, at many of the points where there's like a junction, you're beside an old farm or you're beside a pub, many of which have closed. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's going to be a bit of... Um, figuring out the path and then moving along it over probably the next couple of weeks yeah not the yeah, two weeks max it's, well famous last words but yeah, we'll see yeah famous last words <laughs> but, but uh all of which is meant to get us over to peterborough somewhere along the line we're going to need this <laughs> the last piece of unique hardware um for the system because that is the only there, there are i think it's three locks on here yeah which really. are the only places where that is actually necessary or useful but it looks like you can sell it afterwards because that one looks pre-used uh quite possibly i don't know if it's been pre-used if it's just been painted one way or another we'll probably keep it because we want to have a boat that is literally go anywhere so yeah as we said at the beginning we we're on well creek and we got given this got in ray guide for the Fenland waterways by the very nice people on the wide beam dragon we met about three four months ago on the with them and then we saw them on the ooze and yeah, yeah. they can't get their boat up here so they, so they gave us our guidebook and I need to make apparently some use of it and read from it right now. The Well Creek is an eight mile canalized river which runs between Marmont Priory and Salter's Load. It has a noble history. Probably used by the Romans, it was definitely employed to move Barnack Stone from Northamptonshire to Ely for the construction of Ely Cathedral. Nowadays it forms part of the only inland link between the rivers Neen and Great Ouse. King Canute, 
who lived from 990 to 1035, was regularly rode down it, traveling between Whitsley and Ely. Apparently, he couldn't row himself. <laughs> Once, when the river was frozen, he made the journey by sled. So that sounds funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to Outwell or Upwell today, but they're right next to each other, and I'm not sure which one we're going to. But there's a mooring between here and there, and while there's not many moorings on the middle level, there's one. There's like quite a few here. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're going to stop if we can just there because there's um, an old house that someone lived in for their whole life, and we'll just have a look round, really. Okay. Sounds interesting. Okay. Let's hope it doesn't rain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and me and George are going to walk. Yes. Well, I don't know where I'm going. This, this way. <laughs> <laughs> this book, the other Imray guide had all the like um, walking paths that you can do, but I can't find any in this one. So um, we'll find <laughs> whether you can walk it. Well, yeah, hopefully. There's a road that runs all the way along. Uh, yeah, well, that's the thing. There's a there's a quite busy road that yeah. runs essentially all the way along Wells Creek. Yeah. Um, right beside it, yeah. all the way to. Oh well. Yeah. Or oh well. Oh, well. <laughs> whichever one comes first. And um, and yeah, so there's there's sort of a, a there's a definite pathway there. Yeah, but, but I don't, I don't want to be on the road. I'd rather be on the bank. Yeah. And um, it looks like you can just walk along the bank, but I don't know. We shall find out. All right, let's get going. Cause we've been talking for ages. Yes, we have. You can see Salter's Load Lock just behind us and the lock keeper's cottage just to its right. There's a brand new mooring pontoon here for a couple of boats and it's been a really great place to stop. It's not really clear which side of the navigation is best for walking on, so I take a guess and cross at Salter's Load Bridge. public bridal way so I'm walking it. Well Creek is one of those navigations where the banks are high and the water is low meaning that views from the boat are limited. When you're walking on the other hand you can see the flat landscape stretching out for miles. Just after the road bridge, we spot the first pillbox on the middle level navigations. It's a little bit derelict and half covered in ivy. to walk on the roadside because this is the side that I think the moorings on but it's actually much nicer on the other side um, and the note I mean the road would probably be almost as noisy over there but um, it's a uh, it's quiet at the moment but it's pretty noisy but there's um pretty nice views well beyond the house there's pretty nice views across the uh, flat fens Well Creek passes through the village of Nordelf, or maybe more accurately, Nordelf developed on the banks of Well Creek. Mm -hmm. 
This drainage mill was built here to help drain Nordell Fen. It's now a private residence. And according to the sign, this is the village hall. Most buildings in the village seem to be situated along the banks of the water. And here's the abandoned house we were looking for. It's looking rather sad indeed. This is Millie Court Aqueduct, where Well Creek crosses over another part of the middle level navigations. Below is the 16 foot drain. Michael reverses to have a look and hopefully we'll be down on that water in a few days. Clearly that is wider than 16 feet though. So I've crossed over and I'm now on the other side and there's this beautiful road to walk on. When I say road, it's like there's no cars here. And uh, that's much better than being close to the busy road on a grass verge. And I've got ahead of Michael and he's stopped and he's backing up and I've no idea what he's doing. 
so I guess I'll find out. Oh, here he comes. We're now arriving in the village of Outwell and soon we'll seamlessly cross from Well Creek onto the Old River Neen. The path's now been diverted from the navigation. I think Michael's behind those houses there. I hope he is. I don't know where the navigation is or the boat is, but hopefully we'll find it soon. I was, I was already beginning to get into a mood and then the hire boat thing happened and I was like, I was like, okay, this is, oh, you son of a bitch. Yeah, I think it's because we were, we were ready to stop in Outwell. I was ready to stop in Outwell. We were in Upwell. <laughs> Done. Uh, Do you not want to record this? <laughs> the whole day, because you haven't been on the boat, so I've been, I've been just sort of taking the boat along alone. Yeah. Okay, that's no problem. I don't mind traveling the boat alone. I don't mind it when you're going to walk. Um, but it means I have to go a little bit slower. Oh, my God. I was walking... Like, I totally appreciate that. Yeah. But I was walking so fast. Yeah. <laughs> but I but I have... This is the problem. I have to go a little bit slower. Yeah. So that you aren't... I'm not tiring you ground, out. Yeah. But we, then I when I slow down, it means I have to fight the wind yeah. more. And today the wind it was... was just a bad combination because yeah. if I'd been on concrete I could have kept up with you no problem yeah but because I was up on like I should have walked on this side but I walked on this side because I thought we were gonna have a break at that mooring but I was up on this grassy bank which is fine but the grass was long and sometimes it was like knee length and thigh length and it, the ground underneath it was really uneven so it was just so much hard, hard work walking. but the walk yeah. is lovely and it would have been even nicer on the other side but um but then it meant that I had to travel fairly slowly, yeah. which meant that the boat kept trying to go off to whichever side the wind was blowing. Yeah, so you didn't have a nice chilled... Towards, yeah, I just, I, no, it was definitely, there was nothing chilled about it, it was... Well, we couldn't have foreseen that before we started, because we didn't no. know how windy it was going to be, and we didn't know how bad the fog was Well, and was it was be. gusty wind, yeah. so it was kind of like... Takes you by it's support. coming from the north, then it's coming from the south, then it, you know, and... and, and um, not complaining, I mean, it was a very, it was a pleasant drive it just of wasn't the boat. It relaxing. just would have been a little more pleasant if I'd been able to give it a little extra power yeah. and been able to keep more positive steering yeah. on. We probably should have just said, you go ahead and I'll meet you here. Yeah. But we didn't. Yeah. 
there was also the heights of the bridges because the bridges on the middle level are low. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few of them that are quite low. Um, none of them should be too low, although there's one marked on there that says two meter height for two meter headroom. Well, I think that was supposed to be the pipe bridge I passed under before I got here because the bridge marked on the on the map that we've got, the MRAE's map that we have, very much seems to be in the position up there, north of this mooring, beside this church. But what seems to be marked on there is a road bridge. Well, now there's a road bridge, and that road that bridge is, is considerably lower than the <laughs> pipe bridge, but the pipe bridge is marked as having a two meter height. And so the whole time I'm like, man, two meters, that's not, it's not gonna be that bad. Like I should make it, but everything that I've come past has been a little bit harder to get under than. Yeah, so I think this is yeah. a lesson that for the next cruise, we'll just take things as we find them and not rely on the map. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And just, you know, in terms of height, I'm just noticing that like, maybe the water level's a little higher or something. Yeah. Um, but I've been noticing that, you know, we, we definitely haven't got as much headroom as I would hope for. And then there was the interesting choice by the day boat. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that was just, it was just kind of funny because you, you called me to warn me on the radio. It was around a bend for me. So you called and said, oh, there's a, there's a canoe coming. Yeah. And then there's a narrow boat. Yeah. Okay, no problem. So I, I, I'm banking around that curve. I come into view where I can see the, canoe coming along i i see them they see me i pull all over far they to the side right over. um well they pulled right over but then they also just completely stopped so i think they were think, waiting for me to pass or right. something so i was like okay i'll continue along but i'll stay well over to the right hand side of the bank there's lots of room for the narrowboat and the canoe if they even happen to pass side by side yeah, but, but there's lots of distance so that they don't they have can, to pass they side can by just side. stop wait for you to pass the canoe and then they can pass the canoe and then the canoe right. is completely safe <laughs> so so I'm I'm watching these these parents pulling the canoe along with these two little kids in the middle going like ah this is interesting you know and I'm like okay I'll pull far to the right but the day boat just keeps speeding up and keeps going far to the left so it's getting it was, it was it's, like, it's creeping up right behind the canoe right behind the canoe yeah. um and going at speed yeah and I was actually it, quite <laughs> anxious I'm like I'm like, well, I've got the life preserver here and the throwing rope there, so was, just in case. I was getting ready to tell them to stop and to slow down, but... Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, so close. But then at the last second, it's like, okay, the canoe's passing me. Now I just, I was just like, do you notice that my nose is past your bow? Now I'm going to swing my nose over yeah. and go, and push it a little bit. So he then, he saw me swinging my, my back end over and, and came down between us. I and mean, I'm just like, what do I have to do to telegraph? There's... 18 feet of space there was plenty of room <laughs> it was a day boat it is not experienced and it was fine in the end but it wasn't ideal no yeah well because i was just i was watching the parents and the two kids in the canoe and then as i passed they looked back and the parents now noticed that boat coming for the first time they and they were a, like oh there's another one behind us they looked a bit stressed afterwards <laughs> i have to say yeah well, anyway i hope they're okay Anyway, we're now in Upwell. Um, there's not a lot here. Um, there was an Outwell. This is confusing. An Outwell, which is about a mile back, I think. There was a post office, a cost cutter, um, another grocery store, a fish and chip shop. So it would have been great to stop there. <laughs> Sorry, I, I got distracted by the, the guy in the um, mobility scooter doing 25 to 30 miles an hour down the road. <laughs> What, here? Yeah, just... <laughs> I just like, what the heck is it? Anyway, oh, sorry. focus, Michael. Focus. Just over that bridge, that low bridge there, is a post office, which won't be open today because it's bank holiday Monday, which is why the weather's not good. Um, and there's also like a convenience store, so we should be able to get some bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. So we should make a walk back and get that. Can and, we do that now? Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't get to read the sign on the side of the chip shop that says we fry new potatoes and then it had the frying times listed oh. and i'm like oh, i wish i could have seen the frying times i doubt it'll be open today yeah quite probably not but at least the cost cutters there yeah let's go and walk over yeah so that's it that's uh the beginning oh. of the middle level uh, never mind. Sorry. did you wait, want to read about king canoe king canoe king canoe oh no no yeah so no it's the story of king john so yeah it, it's 
it's just a funny thing in the Emory's in the Emory's guide. There's you know little blurbs about local history and everything, and and this one is kind of funny because the middle level navigations is at least a good eighteen to twenty miles away from where King John lost his his stuff. So there's no connection between the middle level navigations his stuff. and where King John well, lost the family jewels, oh, okay. right? Um, yeah, where, where he lost, he lost the crown jewels, he lost some treasure and stuff and some horses, and they were all supposed to have gone down in some quicksand. So there's this famous story of King John, the one who looks like a tiger in the, in the, um, Disney movie and was, you know, famously not very fond of Robin Hood. Anyway, that King John was apparently trying to ford his way across around the southern end of the wash. They dragged down the wet, the treasure train of carts and horses, and he lost, you know, the crown jewels of England at the time, as well as some plate and, and porcelain and stuff. Yeah. Uh, which he loved very strongly, apparently. And... I'm sorry, I can see someone's whole bum. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Did you see it? No. I don't. Can we try again? Sorry, his trousers are around his knees. Are they around his knees now? No, he's pulled them up. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, uh... Right. So apparently, there's this story relayed. I'm starting again. So the Imray's Guide has these little sections, these little callouts, where they talk about uh, stories related to the area and historical oddities, and you know, little things like there's a bit about the Well, can, well Creek Trust, and all of these are very useful. But there's this one where it tries to talk about King John losing his treasure. Right. And I'm like, wait, that's like 20 miles from here. How? Right. Is that related? Like the, the guidebook, the section of the guidebook we're in is like so long way and the middle level navigations have no actual connection to this. So what is yeah, the, yeah. what is the story? So I start reading it and it talks about how King John lost his treasure yeah. when he was trying to cross the wash. He was, he was going around the Southern end of the wash and somehow the story goes that his treasure chain train that the treasure train yeah. was consumed by these whirlpools and quicksand right. as they crossed this thing called the Well Creek. Right. And I guess it's, or sorry, not the Well Creek. As they were trying to cross this waterway, this part of the estuary that was called the Well Water. Okay. Or the Well Stream. Well Stream. That's the one. Okay. There, so the treasure train was lost. Yeah. That's fine. Just keep I'm trying working. to do it again. No. So the treasure train was lost as it was trying to cross this waterway called the Well Stream. Yeah. And it was consumed by somehow whirlpools and quicksand. Yeah. You know, which sounds a little dramatic for this area, but apparently. And so there's famously been this thing where somewhere near King's Lynn, there's supposed to be this treasure that has been lost. And, and you know, the family jewels were, were found underwater. Robin Hood never got involved. I don't know how that whole thing worked out. But one way or another, it's this legend. Okay. And I'm like, how are they connecting to this? Yeah. Well, oh, it's because we're on the Well Creek. Uh, so the Well Creek... Oh, it continues. Well, they just wonder whether or not it might do because the Well Stream was wiped out when yeah. the rivers were reconnected yeah, for yeah. the drainage. So nobody actually knows anymore where it the Well be, Stream is. It so, could have been pushed up here on a tide. Yeah, you know. So anyway, it says... That while you're coming along the Well Creek, look towards the bottom and think that you might be crossing King John's family jewels. Um, it's a, not family jewels. Crown jewels. I keep saying family jewels. Yeah. So anyway, there's this story that no, basically says... No, no, just going to leave that in. Okay, you can leave that in. So. Not doing it again. <laughs> that was a really funny end. King John's family jewels. <laughs> ah, the crown jewels. Anyway, the idea is that somehow on this stretch, while you're driving your narrowboat, you should pay attention to the fact that maybe you're crossing over the legendary crown jewels of King John, which is unlikely in the extreme... <laughs> Anyway, ah, on that note, King John's family jewels. I didn't see any family jewels, but I saw his ass. Yeah, this is a hell of a day this has been. <laughs> all right, so this video is all going to be bloopers. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, subscribe to Minimalist Maximal Velocity if you want to get our time lapse videos. 
and click that bell if you want any more notifications. Never, ever again. dark morning is it too dark no it's fine good morning morning <laughs> we are on i think we're on well creek oh, i'm so confused we're on the middle <laughs> level we're, on well, we're creek. on well creek on the middle levels level but um well it's middle level navigations right yeah yeah so we're on well creek morning hold on you got something in your eye finger no uh, yeah. morning good morning we're on Well Creek. On, on the, the middle, middle level, level navigation. navigation. <laughs> ah. Morning. Good morning. We're at Well Creek. On the middle level navigation. No, <laughs> you just say the whole thing. Good morning. Morning. We're at Ella. Uh, <laughs> fuck's sake. I'll say the whole thing. Good morning. We're at middle level navigation. <laughs> Damn it all the hell. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Ha. Huh. Oh no, it's just about the Well, um, well Creek. Just the first. The, yeah. Okay. So the Well Creek is an eight mile one should not read the word canalized quickly because <laughs> i'm like it's, it's it's an eight light an eight mile analyzed river what okay so sorry we're going to start again sorry don't mean for that i was watching yeah. <laughs> you're buffered Buff, been, buffering I'm buffered by the wind i'm sorry you've <laughs> been buffering all this time look at me <laughs> <laughs> Slightly unnecessary. <laughs> he just said, oh, I, he said, I got really cold, so I'm more than a little bitchy. Didn't I? You're that bitchy. You lost this. No, oh, I lost that. Oh, just shit times. <laughs> <laughs> 